Isaac, then Jacob got roughed up by Angel, but stay silent. Touch the hip right out the socket, and it makes sense. And ever since, even to this day, walk with a limp. It runs deep, you're not a pimp. But down the line, it got flipped. We disobeyed and flipped the script. Our heritage got hijacked. They ate the fat and waxed rich. What we had, it was all stripped. Out of sight and out of mind. One day, we'll see the sign on who we are. It'll blow your mind. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Is in my bloodline. From Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. Is in my bloodline. From Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Is in my bloodline. From Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. Is in my bloodline. From Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. So many tears throughout the years. Gloomy days and nightmares. That black skin, they straight fed. That black fist can not compare. These shoes here, get your own pair. No dollar signs for these sweat tears. Bloodshed, plank the flow red. Go Taliban, mess with my fam. No pork, but I go ham. From NY to the promised land. Pyramids on top, sand. We built that, and that's no cap. In America, from the ground up. I gotta sit in the back of the bus. Rosa Park said, hell nah, I'm sitting here, and that's up front. We lost that. Way back with cheap beer and so cracked. To everyone with the same face. Raising kids with self hate, low self esteem, and a lot of trauma. Baby daddies and baby mamas. Take a seat, we are unique. This bloodline, it runs deep. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Is in my bloodline. From Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. Is in my bloodline. From Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Young, gifted, and black. Is in my bloodline. From Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. Is in my bloodline. From Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. Young. Everybody, we're gonna go ahead and open up for class. Ask that the brothers uncover your head, sisters cover your heads, so let's face Jerusalem and open up with prayer. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords. The one true God. The one true God. And there is no other. And there is no other. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture will be coming from Psalms. The 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 6, as it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall, shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I have just read for you Psalm 23rd chapter. May the Lord add rich blessings to the hearing and doing of his words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
singing praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We give Him glory, for He is the King. We give Him glory, for He is the King of Kings. I'd like to say grace and peace to everybody listening and happy Sabbath. It's a blessing to be up here today. The title of today's lesson is With All Thy Getting, Get Understanding. And it almost seems like for the most for the majority of the world, you know, getting understanding on the Bible or the Word of God is something that they put on the back burner. You know, nobody's really concerned with trying to figure out what God says or what He has for this man, but in reality, the Bible is urging you all over the place, look, you need to get understanding. You need to be able to understand or comprehend what the Bible is putting out there. You know, they got a saying that knowledge is power, but in reality, the application of knowledge is power, right? So you can know the Bible, that's why you come across people there and know the word, can recite it back to you, quote scriptures, but don't understand anything they're saying because they don't have no understanding. 
But the Bible, like I said, is urging all of us to get understanding because inside of this Bible, you know, God is explaining to mankind how he's going to take this imperfect man and ultimately make them perfect, make them God. That's something we all need to know. Because without this book, or without the words of God, look, we, we got nothing. We all facing a death sentence. And that's what this Bible is letting you know. Look, this is how you're going to get out from up under this death sentence. But you've got to get understanding. This book, the Bible, is the best-selling book in the whole world. Sold over 5 billion copies. But most people that pick it up don't know what it's saying. Some of us grew up reading the Bible. I know myself, I would read the Bible time and time again. Read whole chapters, whole books. Didn't understand anything I was reading. It wasn't until I started to do what the Bible says. The Bible is real clear. It has a protocol you got to follow in order to understand it. You know, this is a real simple lesson, but like I was taught, the simple things is what's going to help us get into the kingdom. You know, being able to understand all of the difficult things in the Bible is good to learn prophecy, to learn about, you know, the 70 weeks of Daniel, how this world going to end. But just being able to grasp the concept of salvation, that's something we all need to understand. And like I say, a lot of us read this Bible for a long time, read it for years and didn't understand anything in it until we started doing it God's way. And that's what it all boils down to. You're going to have to do it the way God laid it out there. Because this is his, these are his words. This is his knowledge, his understanding. Like we're going to learn, it's far above anything we could comprehend on our own. But the title is, With All Thy Getting, Get Understanding. We're going to open it up in Hosea chapter 4. Because in reality, we're about to read here in Hosea, the Lord is addressing Israel, but in reality, this is really the state of the entire world. Because there is no knowledge of God, like we're going to read, the whole world is out of course. Hosea chapter 4. When you get there, pick it up at verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Uh-huh. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Like I said, the Lord is addressing Israel here, but you can take this and, and put it as a blanket statement for the whole world. Because once you start to get a little bit of understanding on the Bible, you understand the order of operation. God always addresses or deals with Israel first, then everybody else. You go back and read Exodus chapter 19, he called us to be a nation of priests. If we had have been on our job, look, the understanding would still be going out. Wouldn't be all this misinformation. But we didn't. And we're reading about it here. It says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Keep reading. Because there is no truth. Because there is no truth. Nobody's around telling the truth. And it's the same thing today. I watched a video on the Internet this past week about a pastor who was in front of his church explaining to the people they don't know God or understand God because they didn't buy him a watch. They weren't spending money buying him the things that he requested from them. But that's what's going on for the most part. And a lot of people have become, you know, jaded with the word of God. They don't want nothing to do with it because of that. But in reality, it's not anything wrong with the Bible or what God says, it's just people have been taught wrong. That's why it says, because there is no truth, what? No mercy. Uh-huh. Nor knowledge of God and in the land. And that's the big problem. There's no knowledge of God in the land. Like I said, for the most part, the world ain't concerned about getting understanding on the word of God. That's why you can walk outside of this door right now, and you will see all types of stuff going on. And it's the Lord's Sabbath day. Everybody is supposed to be having a holy convocation. You know, resting from all they work. Observing the Lord's Sabbath day. It says, nor knowledge of God in the land. What else? By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery. They break out and blood touches blood. And you turn on the news. It don't matter what news station you turn on, where you live at. You're going to see something that's going on. The whole world is in chaos. Violence is blood, touch of blood. You know, look, black on black violence ain't just begin. It's been going on. But violence in general, it's just, it's, it's all out of order because there is no knowledge of God. That's because ain't nobody trying to get understanding. Keep reading. 
3. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fish of the sea also shall be taken away. But because away. there is no knowledge of God, look, the Lord is letting you know. He's talking to Israel, but everything going to be going to suffer because of it. Even the animals going to suffer. Everybody going to suffer because no one's concerned with getting understanding on the word of God. Keep reading. Yet let no man strive, uh -huh. nor reprove another. For thy people are as they that strive with the priests. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophets also shall fall with thee in the night. And I will destroy thy mother. Like I said, the Lord was upset with Israel here. And as a result of it, he let them go to their own devices. That's why we got a lot of misinformation going on right now. Thank God the Lord is waking his people up in these last days like he said he would in Ezekiel 37. Putting us back on our job. But that's why we got a lot of work to do. Verse 6 is real key. Read that. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We are. And I heard this saying growing up my entire life. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It's not that we don't know, you know, how to work together or know how to do good things without credit. That ain't what's got us messed up. What's got us messed up is we lack knowledge of who God is. Because see, without God or without this Bible, there is no us. You can't give, you can't give yourself uh, a culture or a heritage or a way of life or a way of thinking it, it's derived from this Bible. When you go back, like I said, Exodus 19, we became one nation under God then, a nation of people. He gave us laws, statutes, and commandments. But look, we're destroyed for a lack of that knowledge. And as a result of it, the whole world is suffering. Everybody is off course because the priests of God ain't doing what they, didn't do what they were supposed to do. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because what? Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Uh-huh. I will also reject thee. Uh-huh. That thou should not be, there should be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. But see, look what it's predicated on, the law of our God, which we're going to learn in this class. Look, that's a big key element to you getting understanding. You're going to have to keep the law of God. It's going to keep coming up all throughout the class. But it says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest in me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Turn to our next place, Matthew 13. Because the world is in, a, in such bad condition, now it's on everybody as an individual to go and seek and find the Lord for themselves. You're going to have to put some effort forward. And it ain't no, it's not very hard because like we're going to learn the word is close, but you're going to have to take that first step, which a lot of us can identify with. Like I said, we all, some of us grew up in the Sunday church or grew up in various other religions, you know, trying to seek God, trying to seek his face. But we always had a feeling that something wasn't right what we were doing. You know, the Lord, you, 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 you keep searching, you keep searching, you keep searching, and eventually you're going to get what you're looking for. Matthew 13, and pick it up at verse 44. When you get there, go ahead. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. So this is what, this is what it's like for you to find the word of God. You're going to have to have the mindset of an individual out here looking for treasure because that's what this book is that's what the word that's what this understanding is it's a treasure it says again the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field what else the which when a man have found so once you find it like i said some of us search for a long time and once we found the word of god i know for me myself personally look i was satisfied i didn't have to go look for nothing else it says that which that man hath found what? He hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. But that's how precious this understanding should be to you. It should be like you looking for something, something very precious, and you find it, and it's almost like if y'all was 
can think about it. If I had a scavenger hunt and I set out there, it was $1,000, everybody looking for it. You find that $1,000, what you going to do? Throw a little dirt on it. You're going to hide and make sure nobody else come and find it. Why? Because you want that $1,000. What? Just like this parable is letting you know, this individual, he found the word of God and it was so precious to him. It's like he hid it. He didn't want nobody else to take it from him, so he went and bought the entire field so nobody would look where he found this treasure at. But this is the mindset a person's got to have if they want to get understanding on this word of God. You're going to have to search for it. It's got to be important to you. Keep reading. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man. So the Lord going to give you another parable. And this is how the Lord taught. He oftentimes taught in parables or riddles. You know, something that you can comprehend that would have a message at the end of it. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. So this is going to give you an example of an individual who, who deals with commerce. He buys and sells. He's out looking for something very valuable. What else? Who, when he have found one pearl of great price. So now he done found the word of God, this pearl of great price. What did he do? Went and, went and sold all that he had. And oh, he gave it. everything else up. He said, look, I don't need none of that. This is what I need. See, this is the mindset you got to have if you're going to get understanding on the word. It's got to be important to you. You can't just put it on the back burner. Like I said earlier, the rest of the world, they, they just put it on the back burner. Getting understanding on the word of God is not important to the world. But if you're going to find out who God is and what he requires of you, it's got to be important to you. This is something you're going to have to seek after. It says... Who, when he had found one pearl of a great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Turn to Revelation chapter 3. Because in your searchings and your findings, like I said, it's not like the Lord is trying to hide any of this stuff from us. He just want to know who really wants it. Who really want to find out who God is? Like it says in Deuteronomy chapter 30. When he was talking to the children of Israel, letting them know, look, I'm giving you the, the, the laws this day. And it ain't far, it's not far away from you. It's not up in the heavens or somewhere deep down in the ocean. It's nigh unto you. Because the Lord is making this accessible to everybody. But you got to look for it. You got to search for it. It's got to mean something to you. And once you start learning and, and, and searching after it, you realize it's really simple. See, the things that confound the world to some of us or to all of us, most of us, is very simple. Where you go when you die. They think you're going off to heaven. The Bible lets you know, look, you're just going back to the dust where you came from. From dust to art, to dust you're going to return. Like I said, it's real simple. Even the concept that God wants to dwell here on earth with his creation is a foreign concept to the world. They say the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven almost every day. And it goes right over their head. They got no understanding. They know the prayer. They just don't understand it. But it ain't like God is trying to hide it. The, the things in this Bible, salvation, is almost like they had a commercial a time ago with Geico, I think. They had these cavemen. They say, so easy a caveman can do it. It's the same way with the word of God. Anybody can understand this. You've got to seek it, though. Revelation chapter 3, 1 verse, verse 20. When you get there, go ahead. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. So this is the Lord. He's letting everybody know, look, behold, I stand at the door and knock. It ain't like he literally outside your house knocking on the door. He's standing at the door of your mind and knocking. Like I said, the word is not. It's right there for everybody. But what you got to do? If any man hear my voice. Oh, but you got to listen, though. See, it's got to mean something to you when you hear this word. It says, if any man shall hear my voice and what? And open the door. Uh-huh. I will come into him. So if you willing to search and seek after the Lord and open up your mind, let the Lord, he'll fill you up with understanding. It's that simple. You, the first step of it is you're going to have to seek after the Lord. It says, if any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him and what? And will sup with him and he with me. Uh-huh. Turn to James chapter 1. 
Because like I said, you're going to have to search after this thing. You're going to have to search after it like you searching after a treasure in a field. And it's got to be so precious to you like the, like the parable he gave. Look, you're willing to do whatever to keep it, to keep it inside of you. Because another thing you've got to understand, once you get this understanding, not only you got to search for it, look, you got to fight to keep it. I see it all the time. People get this understanding on the word of God. And they doing good for some time. Next thing you know, one thing happened. One thing lead to another. One thing lead to another. And they ain't even dealing with it no more. If you don't really value it, the Lord will take it away from you. James chapter 1, and pick it up at verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. See, knowledge is just the, the knowing a thing, right? Now you know something, you've got to be able to comprehend it, understand it. That's where this understanding going to come from. But wisdom, look, that's the application of the understanding. That's what's going to consider you a wise individual. If you can take what God has given you and apply it to your life, you're going to be considered wise. But it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. You can go to God and ask for it. Just so you're going to have to come to him. What else? That giveth all men liberty, uh -huh. and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto Like I said, him. the Lord ain't trying to hide it from nobody. He's willing to give it out. You just got to come to him for it. Keep reading. But let him ask in faith, nothing wearing, wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Just, just re-emphasize, you ain't going to be able to come to God and, and, and play around with it. You've got to be 100% sold out. Serious about it. If you really want to get this understanding, you've got to be 100% sold out. It says, but let him ask in faith, Nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave in the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8. A double-minded man is an unstable in all his ways. Uh-huh. You're going to have to have some faith. And on top of having some faith, you're going to have to be rooted in what you're doing. You're going to have to know that, look, I'm searching after the Lord. I want to find out about him. It's going to have to be something you put on your heart. You can't just throw it on the back burner. A lot of folks think, well, I, I'll find out about the Lord later on. I'm young. I got time. Look, young people don't live to be old every day. You really don't have any time. None of us do. See, mankind, we can, we can comprehend this body getting old and, 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 and decaying and getting to a certain, because when you get to a certain age, it don't matter how you lived before, you're going to try to find some kind of semblance of, of the word. You're going to try to get some kind of understanding of it because you know, look, this life is coming to an end. But what everybody has to realize is, don't none of us got time. It can come to an end for any of us at any day. That's why you got to always keep your garments white. It says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Turn to Psalms 111 and 10. And this is a real popular scripture right here. It's a real popular scripture because really inside of it is everything you need to know about getting understanding on the Lord. It's going to give you what you need to start with and what it's going to lead to. Psalms 111 and 1 verse, verse 10. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And for the, for the most of the world... That word fear has been taken and dumbed down. You know, I grew up thinking this word fear meant you got to respect the Lord or reverence the Lord. Yeah, you got to respect God. You definitely going to reverence him, but it means what it says. You got to fear him. Once he grants you a little understanding on this word, you realize, look, God ain't nobody to play with. You go back and read through the Old Testament, he was dropping folks like flies for disobedience. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Because, see, it's going to take some fear for you to apply that understanding. You learn something, and you can comprehend it, 
But look, without an incentive, you ain't gonna do it. A lot of us wouldn't be here today if we weren't scared of going to the lake of fire. But that's what's gonna start that understanding process. You got to have some fear. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hey. How are you going to get a good understanding? A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. But I thought we didn't have to keep the commandments anymore. See, like I said, people, it's nothing wrong with the Bible. People have just been taught wrong. People have been taught contrary to what the word says. It says a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. You know, this, this class, while I was putting it together, it made me think about something that took place during the week. And I was talking to an individual who was dealing with somebody, you know, uh, you know about the word, and the individual they were dealing with was a, was a preacher, a Sunday preacher. You know, they were trying to explain to him about salvation, how you not saved. You know, this is something that's going to happen at, at the appointed time when the Lord comes back. And this individual just could not comprehend, couldn't figure it out. He took him to all these different places, and he still sat up there and said, oh, I'm already saved. I ain't got nothing to worry about. It's only by my faith. But it's because he's missing the key ingredient. You've got to keep the commandments. You've got to be obedient. You want to learn of God, you've got to be obedient. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. What? Finish that off. His praise endures forever. Turn to Proverbs chapter 2. And like I said, we're moving kind of fast. We're going to slow down. But this is a real simple class. You know, but I felt, you know, compelled to teach it because, like I said earlier, it's the simple things that's going to help us stay on track to make it into the kingdom. Because the minute you think you got something figured out, you don't need to learn it, you got that mastered, that's the minute you have a test at it. Proverbs chapter 2, and pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, go ahead. My son, if thou wilt receive my words uh -huh. and hide my commandments with thee. It says, my son, if thou wilt receive my words... And what we're reading about in Proverbs, this is Solomon speaking, but a lot of the times when you read the Bible, the Lord is speaking through his prophets. It says, my son, if thou will receive my words, and what? And hide my commandments with So you're going to keep the Lord's commandments with you at all times. When you get up in the morning, when you go to sleep at night, when you're on the job, wherever you go, you're going to have the Lord's commandments around about you. That's what's going to give you understanding. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, the Lord told the children of Israel, this is what's going to give you understanding and wisdom in the sight of the nations. It's all predicated on the commandments, though. It says, my son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, what? So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom uh -huh. and apply thy heart to understanding. Because you're going to have to apply your heart to get this understanding. But that understanding is going to lead to wisdom. It says, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding what? Yeah, if thou criest after knowledge and lifteth up thy voice for understanding, uh -huh. if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as hid gold. That's uh, why we read that parable about that individual who was looking in a field for treasure. Because that's how you're going to have to search after the, after the understanding and wisdom of the Lord. This ain't just talking about no ordinary wisdom. Because the world is filled with the wisdom of mankind, but we lack in the wisdom of God. It says, if thou seekest, seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure, then what? Then shalt thou understand. Oh, now you're going to understand what? The fear of the Lord. See, hear that word again, the fear of the Lord. Once you start getting understanding on this book, you're going to fear the Lord. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to fear the Lord. It keeps you in line and in check. See, the whole goal of plan is for you to make it into the kingdom. You got to have some kind of incentive keeping you in check. It says, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and what? And find the knowledge of God. But then we just read that in Psalms 111 and 10. That's what's going to be the beginning of your wisdom. You're going to be able to find the knowledge of God now, now that you got the commandments in place. Keep reading. Six. 
For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So you're going to have to go to the Lord to get it. It says, for the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. What? He layeth his sound wisdom for the righteous. Uh-huh. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Uh-huh, because a lot of people want to say, look, I'm covered by the blood. Ain't nothing going to happen to me. Look, you want the Lord to be a buckler for you or a shield, protection. Look, you need to be doing what he say do. That's how you keep them hedges around you. You're doing what the Lord say. Keep reading. Eight. He keepeth the path of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Uh-huh. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yeah, every good path. That's right. Is it on that? Yes, Turn to the next page. Proverbs chapter 3, one page over in verse 13. Go ahead. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. So happy is the man that findeth wisdom. It's going to bring you some joy. That's why I want to emphasize that this book is good for us. This ain't nothing like you just coming to learn about the Bible and we're going to come in here and deal with the word and, and it's a burden. No, once you get this wisdom and this understanding on God, you're going to be happy because it's good for us. Keep reading. And the man that get his understanding. Uh-huh. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise. Because it's more valuable than anything the world has to offer. He's going to say silver because that's something we can comprehend that's valuable. You know, bring it down to our time, everybody likes some money. But this word is more valuable than money. Keep reading. Then the merchandise of silver. Uh-huh. And the gain thereof than fine gold. Uh-huh. She is more precious than the rubies and all the things that can't desire or not to be compared unto like I her. Like I said, it has something more valuable. The things contained in this book are more valuable than anything the world has to offer. Because at the end of it all, look, all the stuff the world got to offer, us, it's going to eventually fade away. That's why it don't hold a candle to what the book got. Keep reading. Length of days is in her right hand. And that's what you're going to get with this wisdom and this understanding on the word of God. Length of days. Now, you might experience some of that in this life, but ultimately... It's going to give you an unlimited amount of days. It's going to lead to everlasting life. But you've got to have the wisdom of God. It says length of days is in her right hand and what? And in her left hand, riches and, and honor. And in her left hand, riches and honor. Like I said, some of these things you may experience in this life, doing it God's way, you know, following after his word. But ultimately, what we're striving for is what we're going to experience in the next life. The length of days that's coming in the next life. The riches that we're storing up in heaven, that moth and, and, and rust don't corrupt. It says, and, le and in her left hand, riches and honor. Keep reading. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Uh-huh. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. It says, her ways are ways of pleasantness, and her paths are paths of peace. Some of us can, can attest to that. You know, the lifestyle we was living before, we got understanding on the word of God. Look, it was filled with all kind of problems. Not to say when you come in the word, you ain't going to have no problems. But some of us was living lifestyle we was living, having problems that was self-inflicted, in and out of jail, doing all kinds of different things because what? We ain't we, we had no understanding. We weren't operating according to the word of God. Came into the word, and it's almost like the Lord just said, okay, I'm going to give you a little peace. Life settled down. You know, people be able to get, get more grounded in life, get more mature. Things start working out for them. But that's what the word of God brings. It says her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are paths of peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold on her. And that's what we all should be striving for, eternal life. Because at the end of all of this, look, what's the point in doing it all if we ain't got a prize worth fighting for? What's better than eternal life? Nothing. Nobody want to die. We all want to live. But you're going to have to take hold of this understanding of this wisdom of God. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Turn to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, because like I said, see, we can't conceive the things that God has already worked out on his, 
on his light days. We can't even conceive it. We have no understanding, no concept of it. That's because what we're going to read here, he's going to let you know, look, his ways ain't our ways. Neither are his, thought our, his thoughts our thoughts. Isaiah 55 and verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while, ye may, while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Just the Bible again emphasizing, look, you really don't have a lot of time. You need to be seeking, you need to be trying to get this understanding why you have an opportunity. It says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. What? Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to, the, and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. And some of us, like I said, a lot of us experience that. If you ain't grow up from a child in this word, then for the most part, you can attest to the verse we just read. Because most of us was out here guilty, deserved death. But the Lord gave us some mercy, gave us some grace, gave us an opportunity to fix it. It says, let the wicked forsake his way. But that's what you're going to have to do. You have to forsake that old way of thinking. And the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For what? For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Oh, but I thought we had wisdom and understanding in the world. Look, the Lord, you know, look, my thoughts, it ain't your thoughts. They don't even compare. Keep reading. Neither are my ways your ways. And we know that to be true because it lets you know in Jeremiah 17, the heart is desperately wicked. You know, it's deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Our ways is contrary, all the way contrary to the word of God. Out the gate. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. So he's going to give you an example to let you know how far off the mark we are by ourselves. When you look up to the heaven, does anybody know how far that distance is? You can't measure it. Can't nobody, nobody got a, a ruler or a, a tape measure long enough to go that high. But just how the heights of the heavens are, look, that's how far above our thoughts that God's thoughts or his ways are that much higher than our ways. That's why it says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, what? So are my ways higher than your look, ways. Look, you can't even comprehend it. That's why we need to be trying to get this wisdom from God. Because whatever we can do on our best day, look, he... Not to say God has worse days, but it says in another place, I think 1 Corinthians chapter 10 or something, it says that um, God on his, on his work, his, the foolishness of God is smarter than the wisdom of man. And we know God ain't got no foolishness, but even if he did have an off day, look, it's still light years ahead of what we can ever do or comprehend on our own. It says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are, the, so are my ways higher than your ways. And what? And my thoughts than your thoughts. Uh-huh. For as the rain cometh down and the, sun, the snow from heaven and returneth not thither. So he going to give you another example. Because we all can comprehend some rain coming down. We see it all the time. This last week we had a lot of rain. It says, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, what else? But watereth the earth uh -huh. and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Uh-huh, because that's what it do. He give you an example. That's what this word is supposed to do. It's supposed to feed us. It's supposed to come down like rain and water this seed that was planted in you. That's going to spring up into everlasting life. But just how that analogy he gave you, just how that happens, what else? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Uh-huh. It shall not return unto me void. And I read this to show, look, just because you read the Bible. You know, some people read the Bible and they say, look, that stuff ain't going to happen. It ain't going to come to pass. God ain't really mad if I eat a little pork. He ain't going to come back killing nobody. He's not really concerned with me missing the Sabbath, missing the Lord's feast days. Look, the Lord say, look, if he wrote it in his book, if he put it out there, it ain't going to come back void. It's going to happen. That's why it behooves everybody to try to get some understanding on what the books say. 
It says, so shall my word that go forth out of my mouth not return unto me void what? But it shall accomplish that which I please. Uh-huh. And it shall properly, it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. Job 28. Because Job, he has some understanding on how great God really was. And one thing to take away from, from reading the book of Job, Job had a lot of understanding. But he didn't get this understanding just by happens chance. The Bible calls him a perfect and upright man, meaning he was obedient. But in addition to that, he had a great level of humility. And I want to bring that up because that's something you're going to have to have to understand this word. Because the Bible is, you know, God resisted the proud. You're going to have to have some humility. You look at Job's life that we can read about. Look, the Lord took Job through a lot. He broke them all the way down. That's going to humble anybody. But look, something I realized in the short amount of time I've been living and walking and walking in the truth is that when the Lord breaks you down, look, it's only to build you back up stronger. See, Job got broke down and he, he, he passed the test. But he gained some humility, great humility. And that's what it's going to take for you to get understanding. But like I said, Job, the Lord showed him some things and he realized how great God really was, how far above his thoughts are than ours. Job 28, pick it up at verse 12. But where shall wisdom be found? Uh-huh. And where is the place of understanding? It says, but where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding? He's asking a question. It's a rhetorical question, but he's posing it. Look, where are you going to get wisdom and understanding at? Verse 13. Man knoweth not the price thereof. Uh-huh. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Look, without God, we don't know where it's at. Where is wisdom and understanding? How are we going to, they trying to figure it out right now. How individuals going to be able to live forever. They got folks freezing bodies. They trying to take consciousness from one thing and put it on a computer chip and save it for later. Look, you ain't going to be able to figure that out. It's only one way to get everlasting life, and it's outlined in this book. But it says, man knoweth not the price, therefore neither is it found in the land of the living. What? The depth said, it is not in me. Look, you're going to go down to the bottom of the sea, think you're going to find that wisdom and knowledge and understanding down there? It ain't down there because that ain't what God put it at. He put it right here in this book. Keep reading. The sea says, it is not with me. Uh-huh. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. And you can't buy it. See, you're not going to be able to use the things of this world to get this understanding. You're not going to bypass what we read in Psalms 111 and 10. It don't matter who you are. The Lord ain't impressed with money. How are you going to buy everlasting life from God? It don't make sense. When he come back, look, your money ain't going to... What you going to do with some money with somebody else's face on it? What God going to do with that? You can't, he can't go nowhere and buy nothing with that. It don't mean nothing to him. It says the gold, it says, it cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. Verse 16. It cannot be varied with the gold of um, um, prayer, Ophir. Ophir. Uh-huh. With the precious onyx. Uh-huh. Or the sapphire. The gold and the... Uh, Crystal cannot Look, none it. of these things compare to it. Diamonds, gold, sapphire, don't none of it compare to it. Keep reading. And the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. Uh-huh. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. Uh-huh. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whatever the topaz of Ethiopia was, it must have been something very valuable because Job saying, look, it don't, that don't even compare to the word of God or this wisdom and knowledge and understanding that comes from the word of God. Keep reading. Whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place so of So if you can't get it with none of these things with gold, you can't find it at the bottom of the ocean, you can't buy it with rubies, then Job is saying, well, how are you going to get it? It says, whence then cometh wisdom. What? And where is the place of where understanding? Where am I going to find it at? Keep reading. Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept clothes from the fowls of the air. Uh-huh. 
Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame It thereof. says, see, it is hid from the eyes of all living. Because like I said, without this book, we lost. Don't, you can't go nowhere to find it outside of the word of God. That's all Job is saying. It kept closed from the fowls of the air. It says destruction and death said, we have heard their fame, heard the fame thereof with our ears. Because that's what's going abroad in the world. Destruction and death. Everybody doesn't heard about it, but nobody knows where to find it at. But it's right here in this Bible. Keep reading. God understandeth the way thereof. Oh, but like I said earlier, you're going to have to come to God because God is the one that understands this, the way thereof. See, wisdom and understanding, it originated with him. It says God understandeth the way thereof and what? And he knoweth the place, of the, the place thereof. Uh-huh. For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven. To make the weight of the winds, and he weighs the waters by measure. Look, that's why I said Job, he got some realization. He was broke down by God. He realized, look, God is, is an incredible being. It says, for he looked to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven to make the weight for the winds. We can't even comprehend that. All we do is get blown around by the wind. The Lord knows how much all that stuff weighs. It says, to make it the weight of the winds, and what? And the weight weighteth the waters of measure by measure. Verse 26. When he have, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder. He just speak the words. Look, go ahead and let it rain. Like I said, this last week we had a lot of rain. Look, if we understood how to go outside and say, stop raining, please. I'm trying to get to my car. We'll do it. We don't got that power, though, but God does. It says, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning, for the lightning of the thunder, what? Then did he see it. Oh, but when he was back doing all that stuff, that's when he saw, like I said, it all originated with him. Then did he see it, what? And declared it. Uh-huh. And prepared it. Yea, and searched it out. Verse 28. And unto man he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Look, we're going to keep hearing it. We keep going back to this fear of the Lord. That's why nobody, most of the world can't get with it. They ain't looking for it, and when they find it, they ain't got no fear for the Lord. The Lord ain't going to open it up to you. It says, and unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord. You learn somebody can do all these things we just read about, you're going to be a little afraid of them too. It says, the fear of the Lord, that it is wisdom. And what? And to depart from evil is understanding. Because, look, all that stuff that's evil, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life, all the things that are compri comprised in a man's heart or mind, look, all that stuff is contrary to understand the understanding of God. You're going to have to depart from those ways in order to get this understanding. Turn to Job chapter 11. Back a little bit. Job chapter 11. Because like I said, Job, you read, you read the book of Job. Look, he spends a lot of time just really thinking and reflecting on how God, who God really is, how great he is. He's going to say something else here in Job 11. Pick it up at verse 6. And he that, should, and he that would show the, the secrets of wisdom, uh -huh. that they are a double to that which is, which is. And what this basically means is, you know, sometimes when you get understanding on the word of God, you learn something, and that's how deep God is. He can make one thing fit on another. You read one scripture, yeah, it can apply this way, but it also can apply another way. It says in that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is, what else? Know therefore that God exacteth and of thee less than thine iniquity deserves. All that saying, all Job is saying, look, the Lord is merciful. Because a lot of us deserved a lot worse than we got. We didn't even deserve an opportunity to get it right, but the Lord gave it to us. It says, know therefore that God exacted of thee less than thine iniquity deserves. Verse 7. Canst thou by searching find out God? So you just going to go search. It says, canst thou by searching find out God? What else? Canst thou find out the almighty un unto perfection? Can you just find it out on your own? What else? It is as heaven as, it is as, as high as heaven. 
what canst thou do? It says, it is as high as heaven. What you going to do about that? Job is asking a question. Look, can you find out about this God on your own? It look, it's all the way as high as heaven. We just read in Isaiah 55, my ways ain't your ways. Even as the heavens are higher, so are my ways higher than your ways. He's saying, look, his ways is high as heaven. What can you do? Keep reading. Deeper than hell. What? Canst thou know? Look, deeper than hell, what he means by hell, just deeper than the earth. He's giving you an example or an analogy. Look, it's way deep down in the ground. How can you know it? What else? Nine, the measure thereof is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. Look, God's wisdom, is, the measure of it is longer than the entire earth. Like I said, you can't take no ruler or no tape measure and measure the earth. But the wisdom of God is bigger than that. It says the measure of it, the measure thereof is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. Verse 10. If he cut off and shut up or gather together, then who can hinder him? Just let you know, if God just makes up in his mind, he can do whatever he want to do. Who can stop God? If God said right now it's going to rain for 50 days here on earth, who can do anything about it? Can't nobody. How are you going to figure something like that out on your own? You're dealing with something, wisdom that far surpasses your understanding. That's why you need, we all need to be trying to get on God's understanding. It says, if he cut off and shut up or gather together, then who can hinder him? Verse 11. For he knoweth vain men. He seeketh wickedness also. Will he not then consider it? It says, for the Lord. See, people think because God ain't doing nothing, like I said, people read this Bible and think, oh, it ain't, it ain't, it's not, it's not real. Or it's not that serious. You now you tell, I've heard, talk to people about, you know, eating pork, eating shrimp. They turn around and order it right next to me. Oh, ain't nothing going to happen to me. See, I'm fine. They think God don't see it or he doesn't know. That's why they don't believe it says, verse 11, for he knoweth vain men. He sees wickedness also. Will he not consider it? You think God just put all this stuff out here for no reason? He ain't worried about it? Verse 12. For vain men would be wise, though men be born like a wild ass's coat. It says for vain men would be wise. So even man, even that individual like that has an opportunity to get their act together. That's why it says for vain men would be wise. Even though they be born as a wild ass's coat, even though you're going to act a donkey, the Lord is letting you know you got the ability to get this wisdom. But what you going to have to do? Verse 13. If thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thine hands you're toward gonna him. You're going to have to prepare your mind and search for the word. And what else? If iniquity be in thy hand. And when you come to the Lord, because a lot of people got this doctrine that, you know, I can come to the Lord however I want to. You know, the Lord loves everybody. He's going to accept what I believe and what I do. Everybody can find their own way to God. All that foolishness. Right here, the Lord says, if thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thy hands toward me, but if you stretching out your hands to the Lord, and if iniquity be found in thy hand, what you got to do? Put it away. You're going to have to change. You're going to have to get rid of all that stuff. You ain't going to get understanding on the Bible, on the word of God. Operating like we read in that James, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You're going to have to, if you really want to get understanding, you're going to have to be sold out. The Lord ain't just giving this gift because what it is, it's a gift. He ain't giving it out just to any and everybody. It's a blessing that we can come here and, and learn about God on the Sabbath and comprehend it and apply it to our daily lives. Because a lot of people out here in the world, they lost. Ain't got no hope for the future. Don't know right from wrong, up from down. They just around here getting beat up. It says, if iniquity be fine in thy hand, put it far away. And what? And let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacle. And these tabernacles, you're talking about these are your mind. You ain't going to let wickedness dwell in your mind. The minute you get something that's contrary to the word of God, you're going to cast it down. Doing what? Using the word of God. It says, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. 
turn to our, our next scripture, 1 Kings chapter 3, because we're going to look at an example of an individual who... We're good on 15? Huh? 15? Finish that off. Okay. 15 says, For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Yeah, thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear. Uh-huh. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 3, because like I said, we're going to look at an example of an individual who understood all these things we talking about. He understood he had to go to God to get wisdom and understanding. He understood he had to be obedient. First Kings chapter three, and pick it up at verse five. When and, you get there, go ahead. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon, Solomon. Uh -huh. in a dream by night. And God asked, uh, said, ask what I shall give thee. So anybody know the story of Solomon? You know, this is an individual who possessed immense wisdom. The Bible is, you know, it's the most, the wisest and richest man that ever lived. You know, but at this point in time, you're going to see another characteristic he had. It was humility. Because, you know, Solomon was the son of King David, but it wasn't like he was the oldest. It was a lot of people in line before him. But the Lord going to come to him in a dream and said, In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask him, what shall I give thee? Now, most of us, if the Lord came to us in a dream by night and said, Just tell me whatever you want, you can have it. Most of us wouldn't have the ability to answer how Solomon is going to answer. We'll be thinking about our immediate problems or trying to get something to advance us in his life. But what did Solomon do? And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father's great mercy, uh -huh. according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him thy, this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his, side, his throne as it is this day. And all Solomon is doing is just acknowledging that, you know, the God is gracious and merciful, that he's allowed one of one of David's descendants to sit on the throne. Talking about himself, but keep reading. And now, O oh Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. But pay attention to what he's calling himself. He's considering himself a little child. Not to say he was a, 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 a small boy, but he let you know, look, this is a great task you put before me. I, I don't know what to do. Now you think about it, this is Solomon, the wisest man to ever live, the most richest and wisest man to ever live, but he also was extremely humble. He knew to go to God, he needed something, he wanted to get understanding and wisdom, he knew where to get it from. Keep reading. I know not how to go out or come in. Look, I don't even know what I'm doing, I don't know how to, I, I, can't, I can't do this on my own, I don't know how to rule these people. That's what he's going to say, keep reading. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, uh -huh. which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for a multitude. Give, therefore, thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. So what he prayed for was understanding from the Lord. It says, Give, therefore, thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. What else? For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Look, that was a humble statement he made. Like I said earlier, if, if the Lord came to us in a dream and asked us, just give, just, you can have whatever you want. You ain't got to blurt it out loud, but most of us, look, we'll ask for something else. We wouldn't be thinking about trying to ask for wisdom and understanding. But Solomon was humble. And what's that going to do? What's that going to do or show the Lord? And the speech praised the Lord. It said, and the speech pleased the pleased. Lord. Look, the Lord looked at him and was like, oh, you got it. You figured it out. You asked for understanding and wisdom. Keep reading. That Solomon had asked for this thing. Verse 11. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself, thyself long life. Uh-huh. Neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies. So you, like I said, a natural mind, you're going to ask for money, long life, your enemies be taken out. 
But but he asked for what? But has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Uh huh. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that thou was none like thee before thee. Neither after thee shall any. So arise because like you didn't ask for those things, long life, money, your enemies to be destroyed. I'm going to give you wisdom and understanding. So much wisdom that it don't matter. Ain't nobody before you or after you going to be as wise as you was. Keep reading. Arise like unto thee. And I, I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor. Because, see, what you got to realize, then we read in Proverbs, with wisdom come what? Riches and honor. See, Solomon, he, he didn't ask for those things in particular. But he asked for wisdom. Look, that comes along with it. Like I said, you might not get it in this life, but in the next life, that's, those are the riches and honor we're striving for, but you may be able to attain some of those things in this life by using the wisdom and understanding from the Lord. It says, and I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor. What? So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Uh-huh. And if thou wilt walk in my ways. But guess what? All of it still predicated on what? Him walking in God's ways. See, you ain't going to get that understanding and wisdom from God if you're not being obedient. So the Lord going to give him all these things. It says if he'll do what? And if thou wilt walk in my ways. And do what else? To keep my commandment, uh, statutes and, and what else? my commandments as thy father David did walk. Then I will lengthen thy days. So the Lord, you know, look, I'm going to give you all these things, but look, guess what? You're going to have to walk in my ways, my statutes and my commandments. And look, that goes for us too. You want understanding on the word of God? Like we've been learning, you're going to have to be obedient. You're going to have to walk in his ways, his statutes, his commandments. It don't matter where you go to theology school at, who you studied up under. If you're not keeping these basic principles, you're not going to get understanding on the word of God. Keep reading. 16. Uh-huh. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. So what we're about to read about is an example. Because the Lord blessed him with his wisdom and his knowledge and his understanding. And immediately following it, it got put to the test. It says, then came there two women that were harlots. You know, so you got two women, what they call them, women of the night, street walkers, however you want to label them. You got these two women, harlots, they came unto the king and stood before him. And what else? And the one woman said, oh, my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house. So they was living together in one house under one roof and what? And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. Uh-huh. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. So both of them end up having a baby right around the same time, one three days after the other. They living in this house together, and what happens? And we were together. Uh-huh. That there were no stranger with us in the house. All she's saying is that we was in the house alone, with nobody else in there but us and our babies. What else? Save we two in the house. Uh-huh. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. Look, I don't know how she did it, but this woman was sleeping in the bed with her child, and she ended up rolling over on the baby and killing it. It says, and this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. What else? And she arose at midnight. And can you believe the nerve of her? She woke up in the middle of the night and took my child. Keep reading. That's what the woman going to say. And took my son. And took my son and what? From behind me. While then... Handmaid slept. So she took him from beside me while my child is laying next to me. This is this is the conversation these two women are having with Solomon. Like she came and took my child from beside me and put it next to her. And what? And laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. So she pulled a switcheroo, so to speak. She took the dead child, said, look, I'm going to put it over here. and I'm going to take the live one and put it over here with me. Verse 21. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. Uh-huh. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son. 
which I did so there. So this woman woke up and saw the baby was dead. You know, she woke up to feed the baby and realized it was dead. She started looking at it and looked, this ain't my baby. You know, obviously it must have looked similar, but after a while you looking at it, a mother going to know a child. You know, she going to look at that baby and she going to be able to tell, nah, something ain't right. They head a little too big. <laughs> this ain't my child. It says, behold, it was not my son which I bear. Verse 22. And the woman said, nay, but the living is my son. Uh-huh. And the dead is thy son. But the other woman, she, gonna, she holding to her gun. She basically like, look, this, it, that ain't my baby you got. This is my baby. That other one, that's your son. And what else? And this said, no. Uh-huh. But the dead is thy son. And the living is my son. Thus they spake before the And the, the reason king. we read it like this is to show you this is a conversation that they have in back and forth in front of the king, in front of Solomon. Because remember now, he prayed to the Lord for wisdom and understanding. So now he's about to exhibit some of this wisdom. And you know it had to come from the Lord because the way he's going to handle it, look, it's so smooth. You put yourself in this situation and you got to think quick on your feet. Look, you might, myself, I might not even came up with this way. But the Lord gave him the answer, gave him the understanding on how to rule his people like he, like he asked for. What is Solomon going to do? Verse 23. Then said the king, the one said, this is my son that liveth, uh -huh. and thy son is the dead. And the other said, nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. So he like, one of y'all coming up here saying, look, this my son that's alive, and the other one saying, this one is dead. He said, I got something to fix that. Verse 24. And the king said, bring me a sword. I tell you what, go get me a sword. What else? And they brought a sword before the king. Uh-huh. And the king said, divide the living child in two. So since y'all can't figure out who baby it is, I'm going to take this sword. I'm just going to cut him in half and give one of y'all the bottom, the other one the top. Keep reading. And give half to the one and the half to the other. And then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned. Now, if you're the son. mother of this child and somebody is saying, look, since you can't figure it out, I'm just going to cut the child in half and give one half to the other and the other half to the other, you're going to feel some kind of way. That's why it says, then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. Like she got sick to her stomach even hearing something like that. What'd she say? And she said, oh, my Lord, uh -huh. give her the living child and in no wise slay it. Look, just let her have the baby. I would rather my baby grow up and be alive, have a chance at life, than to die right now. It says, give her the living child and in no wise slay it. What else? But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. That's how you know she done told on herself. Because if it's really your child, you ain't going to say, look, cut him in half. I don't, she can get half, I can get half. You done told on yourself. But see, the way the, that Solomon used that wisdom, came up with that plan, look, it came from the Lord. Verse 27. Then the king answered and said, give her the living child. And in no wise slay it. So he ends up taking the baby from the one that was saying cut him in half and gives it to the other one and say don't kill it because it was just a test to see what would happen. What else? She is the mother thereof. Uh-huh. And all Israel heard of the judgment. So everybody heard about this. It's almost like you got this situation that went on in front of the king and now it's, it's the next week. Everybody talking about, man, you heard what happened down there in Solomon in the, in, in the, in the palace? Yeah, that was crazy. It says, and all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and what? And they feared the king. Oh, now they got some fear for the king. Not because Solomon was a bad guy. He did anything wrong. Why they do it? For they saw that the wisdom of God was in him. Because they knew that God was with him. He had wisdom from God. And see, that's how you are when you operate in God's wisdom and understanding. People going to take notice to it. Not to say they're going to fear you, but they're going to recognize like it says in Daniel, in Daniel chapter 6, they knew that Daniel had what an excellent spirit in him. But you ain't going to get that type of understanding or wisdom dealing with no man, mankind. You're going to have to get it from God. It says, And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king. For they that 
for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. So we reading about getting understanding from the Lord. You got to keep the commandments. You know, you're going to have to seek after the Lord because his wisdom is higher than our wisdom. But God is very practical in how he does things. He deals with mankind with what? With other men. He going, he going, you pray to the Lord. Because I know a lot of us, we were praying, Lord, show us the way. Where we need to go. We want to serve you. Show us how to serve you. Well, and they led us to this church. Or you might have got led to another church that was teaching the same doctrine. But the point is, he directed you to a teacher. Because you're going to have to be taught by somebody. Everybody you see stand up here dealing with the word. Look, they all had teachers. Every last one of them. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Because you're going to have to have a teacher. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And when you get there, pick it up at verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, uh -huh. while the evil days come not, nor the years draw not, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. It says, Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1, says, remember, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Because what Solomon is talking about, this is the same individual we just read about in 1 Kings, but what he's talking about is, you know, and I ain't trying to pick on the young folks because I'm young too, but I want to emphasize the fact, look, we don't have time. Because I talk to a lot of people I grew up with, friends I got, they say, well, I'll get around to it. I'm going to find out about the Lord when the time comes. Right now I'm living life. You know, I'm out here doing my thing. But really, we don't have time. The Bible is urging you all over the place. Right here it says, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw not. Because these evil days you're talking about is getting old. We're not going to read it, but, you know, as this body starts to decay, and it goes through the process of it returning back to the dust. Look, you're going to see some rough times when you start getting older. The, this patch is going to let you know your people teeth going out, eyes going out. You get up out the bed, your knees back, everything hurting, shoulders hurting. You're going to start breaking down, but that's, that's the natural progression of this body, this fleshly body we got. It can't last forever. That's why we all need to be getting understanding on the word of God. So we can get a new body. But what Solomon is saying, look, remember God, or remember your creator before these days come on. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Jump down to verse, verse 9. And moreover, because the preacher was wise. Well, verse 8, I'm sorry. Okay. Vanities of vanity. Shall the preacher... All this it vanity? says that at the end of it all, Solomon, like I said, he's going to run down talking about what you, you know, you, you these evil days, describing how you're going to feel. And at the end of it, he say, look, this whole life you live is going to lead you right back to the dust. That's why in another place, I think it's in Psalms, it says mankind at his best state is altogether what? Vanity. He sums it up right here in verse 8. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher. All of is vanity. Everything you can do outside of getting understanding on this word is vanity. But what are you going to say in verse 9? And moreover, because the preacher was wise. That's why I said you're going to need a teacher. This is just Solomon saying. Because the preacher or the teacher was wise, he what? He still taught the people knowledge. Oh, but you're going to learn some knowledge. See, that's what you're supposed to come to church to get is understanding on the Bible. This is called, we call it Israel Church of Jesus. It used to be on the sign Learning Center. Now it's a Bible class. This is where you come to get understanding. And that's a foreign thing to most of the world because most people go to church for a, a feel good. You know, they go to church to get their they emotional high until they got to come back the next week and get it. It's like a drug. You go to church. 
you feel good. I used to have a professor in college. He didn't really believe in the Bible. He said, I don't believe in God. My wife does. I just go with her because it makes me feel good. But you have folks, they just go to church to get a feel good. You leave church, ask them what you learned. Oh, I don't know. I was, I was in the spirit. <laughs> Monday come, you still running on that high. Tuesday come, you still running on that high. By the time Wednesday come, you start shaking. You feel like, I, I ain't learned nothing to carry me through the week. That feeling I had starting to wear off. By the time you get down to Sunday, it's like I need that drug again. But that ain't what it's all about. See, you're supposed to be going to church or dealing with the word to get knowledge and understanding. That's why it says the preacher sought to find out acceptable words that were written what? He taught the people. Or oh, I'm sorry, verse 9. Okay. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yeah, he gave good heed. Uh-huh, or he gave them good advice. You're going to heed that advice. He gave good advice. What else? And sought out and set in order many proverbs. Look, he sought out and set in order many proverbs or sayings. See, when you go back and read Proverbs, this is Solomon's writings. All of it is telling you, look, you got to keep the commandments. This is how you're going to obtain everlasting life. This is how you're going to get wisdom in the sight of man and God or find favor in the sight of man and God. It's by understanding, getting understanding on this book. It says he sought, the preacher sought to find out acceptable words. What else? And that which was written uh, was upright, even words of truth. Look, if we was going to churches and people was just doing what we reading right here, wouldn't be so much confusion. Wouldn't be so much confusion. Keep reading. The words of the wise are gold. See, the Cards. words of the wise are like golds. And what they are, see, when you understand, you know, about farming and agriculture, you've got big animals, right? You're going to direct them where to go. You ever seen people using like a little stick or a staff to tell the animal to go this way, go that way? But that's what the word is like for us. Because we like some beasts without it. It's going to direct us like some golds. It says in the words of the wise, as goes what? And as nails fastened by the masters of assembly. But also it's like nails. This is what's going to hold everything together. And as nails fastened by the masters of what? Assembly. Uh-huh. Which are given from one shepherd. See, that's what people got to realize. You bring people the word and they say what? I had a, a friend tell me, well, you found your truth. Let me go find mine. Look, it don't work like that. Ephesians 4, let you know, is one Lord, one faith in one baptism. It's going to come from one source. That's why it says, and the masters of the assembly, which are given from one shepherd. What? Finish that off 13. We're going to keep reading. 12? Uh, 12, I'm sorry. Okay. And further, by these, my son, by not acknowledgement. It says, and further, by these, my son, be admonished. admonished. Or be aware of what? Of making many books. There is no end. Look, it's a lot of books out here in the world. A lot of books that, that, you know, lost books that people say they got going on. Look, if they lost, how you found it? <laughs> or they got all these different books about science and all these different, it's all kinds of stuff you can read and indulge in. It says, and furthermore, by these sons be admonished the making of many books, there is what? And much study is It weary. says there is no end. Ain't no end to it. Every day you wake up, somebody else is publishing a book. Claim to got some kind of answers of how you are to live your life. Supposed to be giving you understanding, insight. Ain't no end to all of it. And much studying is what? A weariness of the flesh. Look, much studying all that stuff, it'll wear you out. It'll have you bogged down where you can't really deal with what the Lord put out, his simplicity. Like 2 Corinthians chapter 11 lets you know, look, it's simplicity in Christ. Like I said, this plan of salvation, he laid it out there in the most simplest form where if you will humble yourself and be obedient, he can open it up and show you. You go over there to the children's class. Look, a lot of them kids understand this word. They can go and talk circles around adults who've been in the word for 40 years. But that's how simple it is. But when you're dealing with all these books, it can bog you down, confuse you. You don't know which way is which. That's why Solomon is saying, and, and furthermore, 
By these, my son, be admonished of making of many books. There is no end and much study is weariness of the flesh. What's the conclusion of it all? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh-huh. Fear God and keep his commandments. Look, that, it just keeps going back to fear. We done read you got to fear God and keep his commandments all over the place in the Bible today. Because that's how you're going to get your understanding. Not reading all these books. Look, if they ain't going from the law to the testimony, you don't need that to get understanding on the wisdom of God. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for what? For this is the whole duty of man. Look, this is your one and only job. We all got jobs that we got to go to to eat, you know, take care of our families. People have kids, their job as a parent. You know, you got different duties that you're going to do in life. That ain't what Solomon's talking about. He's talking about above all of it, though, which you should have as your main focus. Your goal that you're trying to achieve in life, this should be at the top of it. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Look, it's to fear God and keep his commandments. Because that's your one and only job. As a man or a woman, it's the whole duty of man. But why, though? For God shall bring every work into judgment, uh -huh. which every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So, Lord, he's watching all these things we do. He's going to bring all the works we do. That's why it don't make sense for somebody to say, oh, I'm saved already. One saved, always saved. Now, the Lord going to judge us according to our works. Like you read in Revelation chapter 20. When he opened them books, they were judged out of those books according to what? They works. It says, for God shall bring every work into judgment, whether with every secret thing, things you think nobody looking at, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Turn to Romans chapter 10. We're going to hear something Paul got to say. Because a lot of people run to Paul's writings. And when they get there, they say, see, we ain't got to keep no law. We don't need no commandments. I don't need any of that to understand God. I got a personal relationship. But in reality, that ain't what Paul's talking about. You know, that's why when you read Romans chapter 6, it says, Paul says, out of his own mouth, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What do you say? God forbid. He wasn't talking against the law. But what he's going to say is he's going to line up with what Solomon just said. You need a teacher. You need somebody to guide you. Because one of the first things that Brother Nate told me, you know, before I started teaching, he said, you know, as a teacher, you like a tour guide. You're going to take the people through the Bible and show them and explain to them what these scriptures mean. Like you are on a tour guide. You take, they take you on a ride. They're going to show you all the main attractions. And they're going to give you a backstory, explain all of it to you, break it down. That's all you are as a teacher. But you need something like that. Romans chapter 10, and pick it up at verse what I got on here? Verse 1? Verse yeah. 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Uh-huh. When you read Romans, you understand it. This is Paul. He's dealing with the Gentiles, the people in Rome. You know, he's talking to them about his people, Israel. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Just showing you, they don't, just because you're an Israelite don't mean you're going to get salvation. You still got to follow up under the same rules God gave everybody else. The only advantage you got by being an Israelite is the Lord chose us to be a nation of priests. Like Romans 3 said, we got the oracles of God. Romans 9, you know, we're going to deal with the services of God. But that don't mean you just automatically saved. Because there is a doctrine out there that, you know, all Israel are going to be saved. Because it does say that in the Bible. But that's not what it's saying. Because you got to understand, when the Lord gets back at his time, when he comes, it's going to be a lot of killing that go down. And Israel going to get caught up in it. Those who ain't doing right, they're going to get caught up in that killing. So all the rest of them who are alive, yeah, he's going to bring them into the wilderness. They're going to be saved. But just because you're an Israelite don't mean you're going to get this salvation. That's why Paul is saying, brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for, 
for Israel is that they might be saved. What? Verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Look, if that don't sound like us today, I don't know what does. Because you go around some Israelites, look, we all, it's like God put some inside us when he calls to be a nation of priests. Look, we all hope, hold the services of God or dealing with the Bible in some kind of capacity in high regard. But the problem is they're doing it with no knowledge, no understanding. And right here what Paul is saying, for I bear them a record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. What? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Because the Israelites at this time, look, they was kicking against Jesus dying for the sins of man. They were ignorant to God's righteousness. They still stuck on the law thinking that that's what's going to justify them back to the Father. Negating what Jesus had done. That's why he said, for I bear them a record. They have a zeal of God. Like they, they doing all of these things contained in the law, but it ain't according to knowledge. It says, for they, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, what? And going about to establish their own righteousness. Or they going to go about and do their own thing based on their works. That's what Paul is talking to them about. But what else? Not have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You know, trying to negate what God did. He came and died for the sins of the world. Number one. And when it says world, it's talking about everybody. That's why Paul talking to these Romans, these Gentiles. But it says they ain't coming up under. It says they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. Verse four. For Christ is the end of the law. For righteousness is everyone that believes. Look, this is where somebody will take you and say, see, you ain't got to keep no law. Christ is the end of the law of righteousness. All it's saying is, right here, Paul, like he's saying, I think 1 Peter chapter 3 and 16, if you reading it and you ain't careful, look, you are twisted to your own destruction. Because Paul ain't saying you ain't got to keep no law because Christ done away with it. Because they'll come here and say, see, the Lord came and he, he nailed everything to the cross. Misquote what they read in Colossians. Look, what he nailed to the cross, that was contrary to you, that was death. And that's what it's saying right here. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness that for everyone that believes. So now this righteousness or this justification back to the Father, it ain't going to be based on works now. Because of what Christ did, he put an end to that. Now it's based off the sacrifice he did. See, people want to call us because we can not keep the commandments, Call us legalists. Say, we, there's something wrong with us. Make you feel like you're doing something wrong by doing what the Bible tells you, fearing God and keeping his commandments. But that, they'll take you here and show you that. That's not what it's saying. Because it's showing we got faith. We believe in Jesus. We believe in the sacrifice he made for us. We accepted that. When you got in your baptism, you got in that water, you was baptized under what? His death. When you got up, you're supposed to be a new creature. You wouldn't have that opportunity if he ain't shed no blood, though. So it ain't that we don't got faith. We got faith in Jesus. We just know, like it said in Revelation 14, look, you're going to have to have faith in Jesus and do what? And keep the commandments. It says, for Christ is the end of the law of righteous for everyone that believes. Jump down to verse, verse 10. For with the heart... Man believe it's unto righteousness. Because that's where it's going to start at. Like I said, we've been going through it. You're going to have to seek the Lord, but it's going to start in your mind. It says, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. What? And with mouth confession is made unto salvation. Uh-huh. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And the reason we're reading this because a lot of people will take you here because we've been reading you got to keep the commandments. You know, you got to be humble. You got to seek the Lord. And they'll take you and say, I ain't got to keep no commandments. But what it's saying is, for with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. But keep reading. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Because that's what Paul was really getting at. It wasn't saying all you got to do is just confess with your mouth and you saved. All he's saying is, for whoever believes shall be saved, because he's dealing with some Gentiles. All he's letting them know is, whether you a Jew or a Greek, if you can hold fast to what I'm telling you, you got a chance at salvation. It says, for there's no difference. Where we at? 
12. For verse 12. Yeah. For there is no difference between Jew and Greek. What? For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon all him. Oh, he's letting them know, look, it don't matter who you are. Because remember, these other folks came to them trying to base it off of their works. It don't matter who you are, you, gonna, you have an opportunity at this salvation. But what you going to need? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh-huh. What you going to need, though, to call upon the name of the Lord? You ain't just out there calling in, in vain. Because another place the Lord said, why call me Lord, Lord, to do not the things that I say. You got to do what he say to get this understanding. But what you going to need? Because like I said, the Lord deals with mankind with what? With other men. What you going to need? 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Uh-huh. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Uh-huh. And how shall they hear without a preacher? So you're going to need a teacher. How you going to hear? How you going to call upon him you ain't heard? How you going to hear? How you going to believe unless you heard it? And how that information going to get to you unless you got a preacher or a teacher? What else? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Well, pay attention now, because this is something that gets a lot of people in trouble. Because, see, everybody ain't sent from God. Satan got his own ministers out here doing, it, doing work, too. For everything God got going on, Satan got something else trying to counteract it. So you got to be mindful of who you're listening to, making sure this individual is sent from God. How you going to know if they sent from God or not? Look, they're going to be teaching you what? From the law until the testimony. Like it said in Isaiah 8 and 20. If they speak not according to this, it's because they have no light in them or no truth. They're going to be dealing with it how the Bible laid it out there. And another thing you got to realize is if somebody's delivering you the word of God, look, the burden of you checking to see if it's, it's true, it's on you. The Lord is putting it on you. First John chapter 4 lets you know you're going to do what? Try the spirit by what? The By spirit. the spirit. Somebody give you some doctrine, you need to be able to look in your Bible and unequivocally support it. That's what that spirit is. I think it's John chapter 8, the Lord lets you know these words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So it's God's words. That's what you're going to try the spirit by. By his word. But you got to know that they've been sent because everybody ain't been sent. It says, and how should they preach unless they were sent? What? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings and of good And that's what time. it's all about, preaching the gospel of peace. Because if you're dealing with somebody and they teaching you something and it got some kind of hate in it, because a lot of folks out here got this doctrine that only Israel can be saved. We're going to beat down our, our oppressors. They're going to be kissing our boots. Look, all of that stuff ain't got nothing to do with the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is the Lord came and died for the sins of mankind. Now you got a chance at everlasting life, but you got to keep these commandments. And you're going to come in peace with it. Like you say, you're going to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. It says how beautiful of them as it is written. Anytime you see as it is written, it's somewhere in the Old Testament, just further showing you they was dealing with the law and the prophets. Paul ain't just pick up the Bible and just start making his own doctrine. You ain't got to keep the commandments no more. He said, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and what? And, and bring, bring glad tidings of good things. Let's get an example of somebody needing a teacher. Turn to Acts chapter 8. Because we're going to look at two examples. One being this Ethiopian eunuch. And we're going to look at something in the Bible that shows you even Jesus was taught. Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. When you get there, go ahead. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south. Unto the well that of that that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. So the Lord going to come to, or the Lord going to send an angel, and this angel is none other than the Holy Spirit. You know, the same angel that goes around dealing with, with God's prophets and his people, 
Or if you, the Lord want to get a message to, to mankind some kind of way, he going to send his angel. This angel identifies himself in Luke chapter 1. His name is Gabriel. So he going to send him to Philip, it says, verse 26, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is the desert. He sent him out to the desert. Philip ain't asked no questions. The Lord sent him out to a desert. Verse 27. And he arose and, and went. And like I said, he asked no questions. He got up and went. What else? And behold, a man of Ethiopian and a eunuch of great authority upon Candace, queen of Ethiopians, he, I mean, who, have, who had the charge of all her treasure. It says, and behold, a man of an Ethiopian eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem to worship. So the, the plan gonna start unfolding because we gonna see, like I said, the Lord deals with man with other men. But you gotta be watching these men. Even anything I tell you, anybody up here tells you, look, you need to go and search the scriptures and see if what they're saying is right. I think you read about it in Acts 17 when Paul was preaching to, you know, I can't remember exactly what city he was in, Look, they was eating it up. They was learning. But it says that when they went back, look, they searched the scriptures, what, daily to see the things that Paul wrote. You're going to check on it. But this person obviously was sent from God to this Ethiopian eunuch. And what else? 28. Uh-huh. Was returning and sitting, his ch and sitting in his chariot, read Elias, Eli uh, Elias, the the prophet. Uh-huh. So this Ethiopian unit, like I said, they were reading the law and the prophets. He's sitting down reading the book of Isaiah. Is that Isaiah or Elijah? He's Isaiah. Isaiah. This translation tripped me up. He was reading the book of Isaiah, trying to get understanding on it. Verse 29. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. Uh-huh, so now the spirit, this angel gonna tell him, look, go over there to get over there to this chariot. Because really he's leading him to this Ethiopian eunuch because he's gonna help him get understanding on the word. Keep reading. And Philip ran thither to him uh -huh. and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understandest thou what thou readest? Like I hear you reading, but do you understand it? It says, understand what thou readest. What else? And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? Like I said, look, as a teacher, you're just a tour guide. You guide people through the scriptures. And you need that everybody does. All the teachers who teach had teachers. Because that's how God deals with man. It says, and he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? So he understood that. What else? And he desired Philip that he would come up, come up and sit with him. Uh huh. That the place of the scriptures which was read was this: He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Uh huh. And like a lamb dumb before his shears, so opened not his mouth. So what he was reading? That's Isaiah fifty three. He's reading about Jesus. It says the place of the scripture which he read was was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so he opened out his mouth. Because that's how Jesus was when he came. See, the first time he came, he came as a lamb, you know, humble, meek. Because he came with a mission to be a sacrifice, that sacrificial lamb. The second time he come back, he coming as a lion. That's why you're going to fear him, but he's reading about this lamb. He's talking about Jesus. Keep reading. In humiliation... His judgment was taken away. Uh-huh. And who shall declare his generation? Because when the Lord came, when he was born, Herod was knocking all the people off around his age, all the males, trying to get to him. Because he had heard this guy going to come and be king, not knowing that that was a future prophecy. He was going to come and be king of the whole world. But that's why it says, who shall declare his generation? Everybody dead. Keep reading. For his... Life is taken from the earth. Uh huh. Verse 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom, wis who, of whom speaketh the prophets this? So he's saying, like, who is this? Who is he talking about? Keep reading. Of himself? Is he talking about himself? Is Isaiah talking about himself? What else? Or of some other man. Or is it somebody else? And what, what's going to end up happening? 
Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Oh, but he expounded and opened up his understanding. And we read this to show you, look, you're going to need a teacher along this way. Because a lot of folks, they get up and say, well, the Lord done showed me something. I done figured it out. Look, a lot of times when you figure something out, you're going to try the Spirit, like I said, by the Spirit, see whether it's of God. But another thing you can do, look, run it by somebody who got some experience in the Word, who been in this thing 10, 20, 15, 30 years. Because a lot of times you figure out, you think you done found something new, but like Solomon said, ain't nothing new under the sun. You're just recycling something that, that was no good from way back when. It's good that we understand. It's okay to have a teacher. Because it says, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Verse 36. And as they went on their way, uh -huh. they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, where is water? Here is water. What doeth hinder me to be baptized? And look, as soon as he got that understanding, now the next thing he want to do is get baptized. Some of us can identify with that because as soon as we got some understanding on the Bible, look, we're ready to jump in that water. I know I was. Got in there three months after coming into the church. Didn't really understand it in totality until I got in the water and I got out and I realized I'm in this thing now. You done made a commitment that's going to last all the way to death. You know, you're going to be a little afraid at first, but, you know, that's good. You hold on to that fear. It's going to keep you in the, on the straight and narrow. But that's what ended up with this, this Ethiopian eunuch, it says, and as they went on their way, they came unto a, unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, see, here's the water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Verse 37. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thy heart. See, look, you believe what? Thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Look, that's what it's going to start with. See, that's, that's the basis of it. It's faith. You're going to have to have faith in Jesus. But you can't have faith in Jesus if you ain't got no understanding of him. You can't start your walk to getting salvation and getting them sins off you if you don't understand who he is. That's why what Paul said, how can they believe unless they be taught? How can they be taught unless they, unless they got a preacher? He said, if thou, he said, he answered and said, I believe that Christ is, that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Verse 38, what happened? And he commanded the chariot to stand still. Uh-huh. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he was bap and he baptized him. And pay attention to where he got baptized at, in the water, because there's another doctrine out here where people saying, you ain't got to be baptized in no water. Look, we reading in the Bible, somebody believed in Jesus, and they went down in the water. You can read how Jesus himself was baptized in the water, because it's an outward expression of something that's taking place on the inside. You're getting buried in that water like you going in the grave like when Jesus died. And he resurrected and got up a new being. Guess what? You're going to get up a new being. That's it on that? That's it on that. Turn to our next example, Isaiah chapter 50. Because like I said, you need a teacher. And what we're going to see is even Jesus was taught. You know, if Jesus was taught, we're not above him. Isaiah chapter 50, and pick it up at verse 1. Thus said the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorce? Uh, and this is the Lord addressing Israel. It says, thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorce? What else? Whom I have put away, of which of my uh, creditors is it to whom I have sold you? So the Lord said, man, where is the bill of the divorce? Because you understand that the Israel just... Our forefathers just couldn't figure it out, couldn't get it together. It got all the way down to, I think, Jeremiah 17. The Lord said, look, if y'all just keep the Sabbath, I'm not going to kick y'all out the land and let all this stuff fall on you. What they do, they didn't do it. So the Lord ended up having to deal with him. And that's why he's saying, thus said the Lord, where's the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away, or which of my creditors, or which of my creditors is it whom I have sold you? Like, who I owe that soldier? Because right now, we in captivity. 
What the Lord going uh, to identify is it ain't his fault we in captivity is ours. Because he ain't owe nobody a debt and say, look, we'll take my people at, as ransom. That's why it says, or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? What else? Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourself. Like I said, it, the Lord let them know, look, it's not because of me. You got yourself in this situation. That's why us as a people, once we find out, you know, who we are, who God is, look, we need to turn from the things that got us in captivity. It don't make no sense. You take this book and try to explain it to somebody, show them who they are as a people. Look, they'd rather grope at the noonday. I ain't no Israelite. You crazy? It says, of which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves and what? And for your transgressions is your mother's Look, put away. Look, that's why I put Israel away. Verse 2. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there no to answer, none to answer? Uh-huh. Is my hand shortened at all? That it cannot And redeem. the Lord is going to basically know, look, make no mistake. It ain't, y'all ain't in these conditions because I can't get you out. That's what he's saying. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that I cannot redeem? What else? Or have I no power to deliver? Look, am I not strong enough to get y'all out of this? What? Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. A, there fish stinketh because there is no water. The and Lord said, look, am I not strong enough to get y'all out of this? At my word, I, call, I dry up the sea. I kill all the fish that's in the water just by speaking it. So you know he got the power to get us out of it. But like I said, we've got to turn back to him. And it ain't going to happen on a whole total scale until the Lord gets back. That's what the Bible teaches us. But us as individuals, look, that don't mean you can't get on the right track. When you got a chance to get some understanding and knowledge of the word of God, you need to take advantage of it. Keep reading. And die of thirst. I close the heavens with blackness. So we read this to show you who we really talking about. Because it's going to take you out of the realm of it having to be Isaiah. It says, I clothe the heaven with blackness. What else? And I make sackcloth their covering. Uh-huh. The Lord God have given me the tongue of the learned. So who, can Isaiah say that he clothed the heaven with blackness? Uh-uh. It says, and can he say he maketh sackcloth their covering? So you know it ain't talking about Isaiah. It says, the Lord God have given me the tongue of the learned. What else? That I should know how to speak. A word in season to so him. So you mean to tell me even Jesus was taught of the Father? And it ain't to say that, you know, they ain't on an equal playing field, but the Lord the one gave him the, the tongue of the learning. The Father did. Because it's like we learned it in school, in math. Some of us still remember who was good in math. They called it the order of operations. You got to have a flow of things. And that's how the Lord operates. They got an order. It's going to come from the Father down to the sun, to the angel, then to Israel, then to the rest of the world. But he got this, this understanding from, from the Father. It says, the Lord God have given me the tongue of the learned, that I should what? Know how to speak a word in a season to him that is weary. Uh -huh. he, waketh morning by mor he waketh morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as he's learned, as uh -huh. he's learned. The Lord God have opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned back, turned away back. Because the Lord, he was obedient. He going to read, and you're going to understand what he means by that in the next verse. Keep reading. I gave my back to the smiters. Look, did Isaiah give his back to the smiters, or did Jesus do that? That was Jesus. When he came in the flesh the first time, he the one who was a living sacrifice. The Bible lets you know he was beaten worse than any man. He gave his back to the smiters, what? And my cheeks to them that plucked off their hair. Uh-huh. I hid not my face from shame and spit. But that was what Jesus did when he came. But we read this to show you, look, even he is taught of the Father. So then you know you're going to have to be taught to get this understanding. There's nothing wrong with that. Turn to our next place, Matthew chapter 11. 
Matthew chapter 11, because like I said, once you get this understanding, it's going gonna, it's gonna to settle you a little bit. If you've really been searching for it, been looking for it, trying to get understanding, once you learn how to do it and the Lord grants it to you, it's going to settle you a little bit. Matthew 11 and verse 25, when you get there, go ahead. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto the babe. See, look, all the things that this Bible contain, the Lord is letting you know, look, it, you're going to have to be humble, like a babe if you want to get it. See, with all the people that the world consider wise and prudent, they can't figure it out. That's why this Bible has been around for hundreds of years and people still struggling with three days and three nights. Can't figure it out. You know, still struggling with, you know, the, diff the simple things of the Bible. Because you're going to have to come to the Lord like a, like a child, like a baby. You want to get this understanding. You can't put new wine in old bottles. Keep reading. 26. Even so, Father, for so it seems good in thy sight. Uh-huh. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. So you're going to get this word. Look, it's going to come. you got to be drawn by the Father, though. Like I said, it's a privilege for us to be in here today. Like it says in the book, many are called, but only few are chosen. Everybody done heard about the Bible, but they ain't answer the call. So only a few of them going to be chosen. And the choosing or the selection we trying to make is at the very end. We on the, on the process to getting chose right now, but you got to stay in it. You got to keep, keep doing the right thing. Stay on the right path. But keep reading. And he to who, whomsoever the son will reveal him. Uh-huh. Come unto me, all ye that labor. Look, this is what the Lord is saying to everybody. Everybody out here is stressed out. Like I said, most of the world, they lost. We blessed to be able to get this understanding. They out there lost. But the Lord is calling everybody. It says, come unto me, what? All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Look, he going to give you some ease. Like I said, once you come into the word, you get a little ease because even if you catch in hell in this life, you know it's something better coming. Why? Because the Bible tells you that. So you're going to get some rest. It don't matter what you go through in this life. That's why it says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give ye rest. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of but me. But what you got to do, though, you're going to have to take his yoke or take... Pick up your cross and walk and do what? And learn of the Lord. It's all about you getting understanding. The more you get stay in this word, the more you follow the rules, you're going to get more and more understanding on God. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor with the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me and what? For I am meek. Because he's me. And what else? And lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto thy soul. Look, you're going to find rest unto your souls. Like it says in another place, in Philippians chapter 4, he's going to give you a peace that what surpasses all understanding. You can be going through all types of hell. But see, when you got understanding on this word of God, you're going to have some peace. You're going to have some rest. You're going to be able to read this Bible and get some comfort. Because you know it's something better coming. Finish that off. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh-huh. Let's go to our last place. Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to end it off where we started it off. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4 and pick it up at verse 1. Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. Uh-huh. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Look, we can't get around it. We just keep, it keep getting brought up. 
Don't forsake the Lord's law, his commandments. It says, hear ye choose the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Because when you read Proverbs, it's almost like the book is talking. The way Solomon wrote it is like the book is talking to you directly. It says, attend to no understanding, for I give you what? Good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Verse 3. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Uh huh. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. So you want to live or have everlasting life? What you got to do, Wayne? Keep my commandments. You're going to have to keep the Lord's commandments. Verse 5. Get wisdom. Look, but the, but the Bible is urging everybody, get wisdom. Learn how to get some wisdom. Because like I said earlier, knowledge in and of itself is just knowing a thing. You know, once you get some understanding, that proves you comprehend it. But the application of that understanding is wisdom. And that's what it's going to take for you to get everlasting life. That's why the Bible is saying, get wisdom. What else? Get understanding. Get understanding. What else? Forget it not. Don't forget it. That's why I said with all that getting, get understanding, because that's what you, all the things we set our mind to in life, ain't nothing wrong with it. But at the end of the day, make sure you're getting some understanding on the word of God. It said, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither what? Decline from the words of my mouth. Uh-huh, verse 6. Forsake her not, for she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. And it's talking thee. about wisdom. If you don't forsake her, look, she's going to preserve you. If you show love or you show attention to it, she's going to keep you. What else? Wisdom is the principal Look, thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. That's, that's what is the most important principle means. It's, it's at the top. Of all the things you're going to get in this life, you should be striving to get the wisdom of God. It should be the principal thing in your life. That's why it says wisdom is the principal thing. What? Therefore, so get wisdom. So because it is, get it. What else? And with all that getting... Get understanding. But with all of the wisdom and un un wisdom you're going to get, get some understanding because that's going to lead to you having wisdom. Keep reading. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. Uh-huh. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Uh-huh. She shall give to thine head an ornament, an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sins. And the years of thy life shall be many. Look, do you want to live a long time? If you want to, like the old folks used to say, go up to glory or be glorified, you're going to have to have some wisdom. You're going to have to be able to apply this word of God in your life. It says, so shall she, so, so shall she give thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings. And the years of thy life shall be many, innumerable. Verse 11. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. Uh-huh. I have led thee in the right paths. Uh-huh. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shall not stumble. Look, if you can hold fast to this wisdom, you ain't going to stumble. Because, see, when you dealing with the wisdom of God, it's going to save you or preserve you from a lot of the pitfalls that this life got to offer. It's going to keep you out of the way of, of temptation. Keep you out of the way of dealing with Satan and his traps. That's why the whole world should be trying to get the wisdom of God. But keep reading. Take fast Take hold. Take fast hold of instruction. What else? Let not go. Let uh -huh. her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. I pray somebody got some understanding in Jesus' name. announcements our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson DVDs and CDs of the lessons are available please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick up your DVD CD uh, at, up at the podium next Sabbath please tune in to the Kingdom Comes television program which airs in various locations. 
Also, join us for a question and answer Bible study in about an hour from now. And every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via live stream and or teleconference at 860-970-0010, access code 343-531-334-POUND. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptism list at the podium or speak with Brother Tony or Brother Anthony. On the first Sunday of every month, we broadcast the Bible in plain view. The broadcast gives brothers an opportunity to read and or teach a short 30-minute class. If you are interested in helping, please let us know. The following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight-fitting, overly baggy, sagging, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove hats and all head coverings and women should wear a head covering, such as a hat or a scarf, according to 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 through 7. If your, child, you know, if your young child becomes noisy during the uh, lesson, distracting other members, please remove him, her, to the other room next door. Any tithe or free will offering should be put in an offering envelope and placed in the offering box next to the podium. For our strength, Pray for our strength as we pray for you next time, next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. I say it is definitely a blessing to be here today. Um, do we have any other announcements? Brother Tony. I want to thank Brother Ant and uh, his daughter has tested positive for COVID. That's why they're not here today. Uh, also, David has a fever. Okay. The other announcement is that from the uh, children's choir, we have some sheets out on the table that you can put your availability where it's, it's a check box that you can check off for your availability for classes. Mm -hmm. uh, the choir, you know, we're going to continue once a month and on holidays. We can practice twice a month. Okay? If we don't practice, we don't sing. So, we're about to I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to repeat it. So what, for those who couldn't hear, those online, Brother Tony said we're going to keep Brother Anthony and um, his family in prayer. You know, they're dealing with some, um, with some sickness, but we know that, you know, we got faith that the Lord going to bring them through and bring, they, and bring her young baby through. Also, we, we're starting the children's choir. Um, you know, get with Brother Tony about that, you know, because they got some practicing that they got coming up. And he said that they going to have the choir and they practicing, they going to sing on Sabbaths and holy days, and that if you don't practice, he says you can't sing with them. Is that it, Brother Tony? Yes. And that's all the announcements. Okay, we have the paperwork out on the table. And they going to have, yeah, the paperwork sign-up sheet out on the table and, um, you know, at the entry. If there's nothing else, we're going to go ahead and close out. I ask that everybody... <laughs> Go ahead and face the rules and we close out with prayer. Our Father, Our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power and the glory and the glory forever forever praise the lord praise the lord for he is good for he is good and his mercy endures forever and his mercy endures forever praise the lord god of israel praise the lord god of israel for he is good for he is good and his mercy endures forever and his mercy endures forever in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray the holy one of israel the holy one of israel the king of kings king of kings and lord of lords lord of lords the one true god and there is no other. And there is no other. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. And be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. And give thee peace. And give thee 
keep peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And I will bless them. And I will bless them. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.